Okay, here's the last of my Mr. Nightmare stories. It's just appropriate for Christmas. Three nightmarish true Christmas stories. Super pumped for this. I'll be ready. Let me put my headphones in. Get ready. Here we go. Right now, go. The Nightmarish Christmas Horror Stories 2019 edition. Story one. All is bright. This happened back at a magical, delicate age when I still believed in Santa Claus. <laughs> it was Christmas Eve night, or technically Christmas at that okay. point. The time, I have no idea. All I know is it was late and everyone in my house was probably asleep. Okay. I woke up randomly to what I don't know, but I was probably extremely thirsty. I had to get out of my bed and walk all the way downstairs to the kitchen to get a glass of water. Okay. There were night lights on in the living room and kitchen, so I didn't have to turn on any lights to see where I was going. Okay. Whenever I was thirsty when I was a little kid, I'd always decide to finish the glass in the kitchen instead of bring it up to my room. I don't know why, just one of those stupid things I did as a kid. As I was sipping the water, I heard noises come from down in the den, where we had our Christmas tree. It sounded like a big bag. I peered my head around the wall leading down the stairway to the den but it was a little too dark to see who could be down there. I actually thought maybe it was my mom, so I started walking down the stairs, and the rustling of the bag stopped. Oh. I turned down the couch side lamp, and there I was, greeted with a massive man, both in height and size, wearing a red suit and hat, and a familiar long white beard. Santa Claus. It was Santa Claus. He waved me over, and I nervously but excitedly walked over to him. He patted my head and said he was just delivering my presents for his black bag. I looked at the bag, which seemed to be full of small boxes. I tried to get a peek in the bag, but he stopped me and said, No, no, don't do no that. Peek. It's a surprise. No peeking. I noticed there were already some presents under the tree. He turned me around and whispered in my ear, I need to go back to bed. For some reason, I didn't go. I just turned around and kept looking at Santa. Eventually, he actually started walking me up the stairs, telling me we need to be quiet. He asked me which way my room was, and then he told me to go up the second flight of stairs. Oh, that was when I actually obeyed him. I looked down the stairs when I was at the top, and all I saw was the eerie figure of the Santa Claus looking up at me. I realized he turned off the nightlight as I was walking up the stairs. I went to my room and shut the door, excited that I just saw Santa. As I tried to fall back asleep, I heard a loud bang from downstairs in the den. The sound traveled all the way back up to my room. I assumed that was Santa leaving the house. The next morning, I woke up early to my mom's screams downstairs. I ran down to the den where my mom and dad already were, to a disturbing and confusing scene for my young self. There were no presents under the tree, and the sliding window was broken. Ah. I don't mean the glass was shattered, I mean it was slammed shut so hard it got knocked off the sliding mechanism. Jesus. I confusedly asked my parents what happened, and explained that I saw Santa last yeah. night. When I told them this, they frantically tried getting as much info out of me as possible. My dad called the police, and when I asked him about the story for fresh details before writing this, he said the 911 operator said on the line that two other calls for the same incident had come in that morning. Apparently a man dressed as Santa Claus was targeting certain houses with accessible windows Duh. and he was stealing the gifts under their Christmas trees. I believe there's a special place in hell for exactly. that man. My parents had to tell me later that day that Santa isn't real and that should anything like that ever happen again, not to trust <laughs> it. Yeah, unfortunately. The world's crappy. Story two. I once worked as a night security guard for a brief, horrible part of my life. It was for many places, but for the longest time, a mall in Chicago, which I'll leave the name out so that the story can in no way get traced back to me. As the lone night security guard in a huge city mall, it was very relaxing and laid back. But of course, working graveyard hours was the worst, especially when I had to do it on Christmas Eve night. I did my regular pacing back and forth the wide halls of the mall. Occasionally having a seat by the big center Christmas tree, which would stay lit 24-7. After getting a coffee from the security lounge section, I stepped back into the hall and noticed all the way on the other side of the mall, 
A light was on in one of the stores. A light that wasn't on before, I swear. Oh, no one was supposed to be in the mall besides me. I jogged over to the store and set my coffee down under a plant. It was a jewelry shop. I tried opening the door, but it was locked. So how could anyone be in there? The light in the store suddenly started flickering, so naturally I had to chalk it up as faulty wiring, false alarm. I knelt down to pick up my coffee again, and as I looked up, I saw someone's head behind the front counter of the ah. store. Just their head, Jeez. like they were hiding. Jesus. But it happened so fast. One moment there was light, the next darkness, and when the light flicked back on again, the head was gone. I literally rubbed my eyes and shook my head, wondering was I seeing things. I took my master key ring off my belt and fiddled for the key to the store. I didn't know where the light switch was, and to be honest, I was way too freaked out to check behind that counter with nothing but a flashlight. Ugh. I shut the door and relocked it and walked back to my post by the Christmas tree. I started chugging my coffee because I really thought I was losing it after seeing what I saw. The lights in that store all the ways down on the other side of the hall were still off, but I heard a click and then a bang echo down in my direction, followed by someone running across oh, one side of the hall to the geez. other before disappearing in an intersecting exit hallway. Yeah. I sprang up and almost spit out the remainder of my coffee. I ran down the hall till I came to the intersecting smaller hallway. This hallway, which led to one of the exits, had a bunch of massage chairs, coin-operated kitty rides, and the public restrooms. Okay. I didn't see anywhere else that person could have gone besides the restroom, okay. as the exit doors were all locked from both sides. Okay. I got to the door of the men's bathroom and stopped, <laughs> once again faced with the fear of confronting whoever was in exactly, that hall without a weapon. I cracked the door open just slightly, enough for me to start speaking into the bathroom, saying whoever's in here needs to get out before I call the cops. <laughs> there was a crying and moaning type noise coming from inside the restroom. What? I opened the door fully and realized it was coming from one of the stalls. Okay. I repeated what I said at the door but the crying sounds didn't stop. I knelt down in front of the stall to get a peek under, and I saw two black shoes facing the door, facing me. It seemed the person was just facing the stall door, making these crying noises. The crying stopped, and then the next thing I saw was the person on the other side of the stall quickly get on their knees and look under the door back at me. I recognized it as the same person from behind that counter in that store. I got back on my feet and left the bathroom to call the police and explain the situation. As a security guard, I never encountered anything like this overnight, <laughs> and I didn't know how to deal with it. I definitely did not want to make it physical. A couple police officers came to the doors at the end of the hall, and I let them in. We all went to the men's bathroom again, and the stall door was still shut, and the man was still inside. For the longest time, the officers demanded he come out with his hands up. After a while of him refusing to listen, the male officer started kicking in the stall door until it broke open. The two officers apprehended the nut job inside the stall. As they walked him out of the mall though, the man had his head turned to look at me the entire <laughs> time. I looked away. His dead eyes staring into my soul genuinely disturbed <laughs> me. He looked like he wanted to kill <sighs> me. Before he was put in the back of the police car, he said my name. And I immediately got the chance. Ugh. The officer said they would find out who he is and everything, <laughs> and they went on their way. Jeez. My shift ended a few hours later, and for the remainder of my time working at that mall, I was always paranoid every time I'd turn a corner that he'd be standing there. <laughs> Good story. Story number three. Story three. Yeah, Our parents had our youngest sibling much later than they had my brother okay. and I. This happened last year when I was 18, my older brother was 24, and our youngest sibling Rachel was just two. I was home from college for winter break. My older brother would be returning home from out of state in a few days, and my parents were on a couple's vacation. It was about a week before Christmas, and I was tasked with taking care of Rachel until my parents okay. got back. My time watching Rachel consisted of a lot of sitting around the house, having friends over, and just watching TV and movies. I would let Rachel play in the living room with her toys as I'd watch TV with no lights on but the Christmas tree, 
which I always find to make watching TV a lot more relaxing. When Rachel started to get tired, I brought her up to her room, changed her, and put her in the crib upstairs. I made sure to turn on the baby monitor, as my parents did every night, just to make sure I could hear her if she got okay. restless. Something to note, Rachel's room shares a bathroom with my mom and dad's room. So basically, both my parents' and Rachel's rooms are connected to a bathroom, which thus connects the two bedrooms in a sense. I went back downstairs to watch TV. I think I was watching The Grinch when sounds started coming from the baby monitor. Distorted, human-like oh. noises. Oh. It didn't sound like Rachel, so I hurried back upstairs to Rachel's room. I burst in so quickly and aggressively that she immediately awoke and started crying. I looked around the room naturally. Then I picked Rachel up and started gently rocking her. But I realized this didn't help. She was probably too big for it. So I put her back down in the crib and started tickling her, then gently whispering her back to sleep. When she had her eyes closed again, I left the room. A few minutes later, I heard Rachel crying again through the baby oh. monitor. I ran up to see what's wrong, and she was standing in her crib, pointing at the bathroom door, which was cracked oh open. I honestly didn't remember if it had been cracked open like that earlier or not. I went to check the bathroom, and it was clear. I told her calmly she's imagining things. I wasn't sure how much she understood of what I was saying, but after a few minutes in there with her, I got her to settle back down. Once again, I went down to the living room to continue watching TV. The orange light on the baby monitor once again started going off. I felt like I was in a horror movie scenario. I could distinctly hear a man's whispering coming from the baby monitor. Jesus. I ran back up Get to him. that room faster Get than him. ever, burst through the door to Rachel's crying again. I went to pick her up to get her out of there. And when I turned for the door, I looked into the dark bathroom, which now had the door wide open. There was a man in my oh. parents' room and he started walking through the bathroom towards me oh. and Rachel. I ran out of the house to the neighbor's house while holding Rachel. Our neighbor Judy let us in and let me use her phone to call Jeez. the cops. They didn't find anyone, but Judy let us stay the night at her place regardless. The next morning, Judy went back to my house with me to look around as yeah. support. The house seemed clear. However, I couldn't help but look around the house to try and find out how he got in. But I just couldn't, and it made no sense. A couple weeks later, my mom sent me to the attic to put some of the Christmas decorations away. And you wouldn't believe what I found what? out there. In the corner of the attic was a bed of blankets and a pillow, hidden behind a bunch of ripped up boxes stacked up as a wall. Jeez. I immediately associated it to that man in our house. Jeez. We have no idea how long that man was actually in our house. Jesus. Ugh. That's freaky. That's a good. That's three good stories. Overall, like I said, the uh, I think the uh, the first story, first story wasn't scary because you didn't, you thought it was you know you were a kid and you thought that was Santa Claus, so that's not you know that wasn't scary. The second story was you being in the mall by yourself, that big old mall, and then. Somebody is in there behind that stall and you don't have no weapon to defend yourself or no handcuffs to apprehend that person If you're gonna do that, that is when, when freaky Okay, but the story I think the story that tops it is the third one with the with your sister You know your sister you keep going up to the room and she's crying and stuff Obviously, she's seeing that strange man in her house And that's why she's crying and stuff and you hear the man's voice and the man was probably trying to quiet her down Probably telling her Shh, be quiet. Shh, be quiet and, you know, she was probably crying. Exactly. So, because, you know, kids, you know, they're going to cry. This is some stranger, somebody they don't know. And luckily for you, you was able to get out of the house with the, with your young sister. Because that could have been a real tragedy. Somebody breaking in the house and somebody that actually was living in your house. When you actually went up to the attic and you saw there was boxes stacked up there and a pillow and all that stuff. The guy could have been living in your house for weeks or stuff, whatever, without y'all knowing, which is, is a scary thought. It's a truly scary, scary thought. That's why you always got to have, I think, a, a home alarm or something on your, you know, especially if you got a house, you got to have an alarm on your house. So that way, in case any stranger tries to break in, because that, that could end it really tragically. Exactly. 
again because you're luckily like I say your your little because your, your little sister kept crying because there's you know what if she fell asleep and didn't wake up you know who knows what if that guy would have came downstairs and tried to murder you or something or so or murder or better yet kidnapped her and left the house or something like that I've been oh my god can you imagine the guilt you would have felt behind that that's just that's freaky so like I said I think that's the scary story the, the first story like I said you were a little kid and you thought that was Santa Claus so you didn't know any better so that's not scary so much the second story that was kind of free that was so it could be third the second story than the first story Cause the second story you're a mall security guy with no <laughs> all you got is the flash and you got no handcuffs you got no taser which definitely you should especially you're gonna be working in a mall by yourself they should give you at least a taser and some handcuffs and stuff so you can you know you can restrain somebody or something so it's because that's what you're gonna do I mean by the time the cops get there the guy could be supposed the guy was totally psycho and when you went into the bathroom after him he'd have burst through the door and and overpowered you and then you know and killed you or something so you know that's freaky so uh, definitely so number three number two number one anyway let me know what you think of these stories and i'll leave a link to mr nightmare um channel in the description box so you can check it out for yourself I also have links to my facebook my twitter my instagram I also have a link to my other channel for views and opinions please check that out as well and this is trey paris saying so long and take care